It is across the grass area from the Jumbotron. That is the beer garden here at the San Diego Crew Classic. Yes, yeah, the next races we have coming up, the uh, women's collegiate novice and the men's collegiate novice. Uh, novice covers a multitude of things. They may be crews that have never rowed before getting to university, or they may be crews that are essentially freshmen. That is, uh, they've rowed in school or junior programs, but this is their first year of collegiate competition, and so they reacquire a novice status for the purposes of collegiate rowing. Three in four inches. Well, here we are back at the start, starting area Lane two in SeaWorld Cove. Four inches. We are working on the final alignment. Dick Alcock, Alcock the aligner today on the side. Lane three in four inches. Still beautiful weather. However, I can tell you that the wind. Uh, has clocked around and it has six picked up slightly inches. off the port bow. It is now coming a westerly, which is left to right All across right the race there. course. Yeah. <laughs> it is just insignificant at this point. The water is flat. It's a beautiful morning. UCLA. Oklahoma. Starters pulling the field. Four inches. Sacramento State. Stop. Lane one out four inches. Stop. Crews are sculling slightly back and forth. Lane three Working in on their point. Sculling means that they bring an oar parallel to the hull. Stop and side thrust the boat, five in just moving the bow inches. from side to side, not pulling Stop. away from the stake boats. Lane six in six inches. Let me know if you want it to come down. We have hands up right. and hands down. It Lane won't take long before in. this uh, starter goes to this countdown. Will not be recognized. Five, There's four, our countdown. Six, four Three, inches in. Now. Two, one, attention. And there goes the command for the start. Women's Collegiate Novice Event. Lane one, Washington State. Lane two, USC. Lane three, UCLA. Lane four, newcomer to our program, Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma. Lane five, Minnesota. Lane six, Sac State. All boats have cleared the 100 meter breakage area with USC and Washington State, your early leaders. Washington State, USC, two seats over UCLA. UCLA is a seat over, two seats over Minnesota. Minnesota is two seats over Sacramento State outside in lane six and Oklahoma. A little bit of a course issue here with lane one is Cox nearly took out a marker. We, we have a major crab at USC. USC went dead in the water, major overhead crab, and they have stopped and they're just now picking back up. They went from first to last. Our leader by themselves right now is Washington State in lane one, followed by UCLA two seats down. USC is now back and taking a burst to try to get back into this piece. But right now it is Washington State, in the lane one closest to the shore, two seats over UCLA. UCLA is two seats up on Minnesota. Minnesota is six seats up, uh, even with uh, Oklahoma and Sac State. First across the 500 was Washington State and UCLA. UCLA is now pushed back forward. UCLA is pushed into, U into Washington State. UCLA is now your early leader. 600 meters into the race, UCLA has made a move on Washington State. Washington State, though, has seen the move and has answered it. Minnesota is coming with both of them. Minnesota is now four seats down on our leaders, but is is uh, uh, 
Minnesota is uh, four seats up over Oklahoma. Outside lane six is Sac State. But keep your eyes, please, on lane two, USC. USC went from a dead start, has now gained overlap back on lane six, Sacramento State. In the middle of the course, we have a flag from the referee trying to uh, separate apart Minnesota and Oklahoma. At the 750 meter mark, it was dead level between UCLA and Washington State. Lane four is being flagged to uh, return to their leg, their lane, which is Oklahoma. But USC is now coming back hard on Sac State. So at the 750 meter mark, it is Washington State, UCLA out in front. Look to Minnesota and Oklahoma, but don't, don't lose sight of uh, USC who's charging back into the field. That is your call. Women's Collegiate Novice Grand Final on the water right now. Lane assignments, Washington State University battling almost even, and they're coming out of lane number one. USC, our early leader, really tried to dig a hole in the water, and it ran them from first place to last place almost in an instant. They are in lane number two. In lane number three, it is UCLA battling Washington State for the lead. In lane four, Oklahoma. In lane five, Minnesota. And stroking out of lane number six is Sacramento. Yes, Alan, as they came through the thousand, it was the crew in lane one, Washington State, that had a lead over UCLA. Minnesota had taken the lead over Oklahoma of about half a length, but back to Sac State with the USC crew still trying to make up ground in lane number two. Always very difficult for a crew to effectively restart the race from a dead stop after they've had an overhead crab, but the adrenaline tends to really flow at that point and sometimes miracles can happen. Coming through what is insignificant at this time, but what would be considered our wind tunnel area of our race course under the Ingram Street Bridge, and it is not affecting crews as much as it did yesterday. Washington State University continues on the lead. UCLA in the center of our race course is in second spot. Then look outside to Minnesota. In fortunate circumstance with USC has continued to plague them and they are trailing. All the way on the outside, Sacramento State. Alan, the only thing that's going to get USC back in this is the fact that if they can if they can see somebody or feel that somebody's near, that's when they can get that's where they can get charged up to get back into the race. But their nearest point of contact is way out in lane six. Not even sure that they can really see them, even in their peripheral vision at that stage. But we'll see what happens in the final 500. With 500 meters to go, Washington State seemingly has held off the challenge of UCLA and beginning to open up some distance between the two of them. Outside, Minnesota continuing to hang in there, but Oklahoma has picked up the stroke and moved into that fourth position. Then looking all the way outside to Sacramento State, and then the unfortunate incident earlier is still affecting USC, and they are trailing by open water. Yes, Oklahoma are the ones that have really made the big move at this point. They were down on Minnesota by about three quarters of a length. They've moved through them and now have them by about a quarter of a length coming up to the final 250. This is Washington State as we near 250 to go, continuing on the lead. Then it is UCLA. And then outside, a very, very interesting race between Oklahoma and Minnesota. And it looks like Oklahoma has snuck in there. All the way on the outside, it is Sacramento State and USC gamely trailing. Washington State running at 34 now. They haven't really ratcheted it up yet. And then they are trying to hang on against UCLA. Then all the way on the outside, it is Minnesota trying to fight back against Oklahoma with Oklahoma on the edge, but that would be the battle for third position. It is Washington State. 
has ratcheted up slightly to 36, and they have some open water lead over UCLA. But the interesting race will be on the outside between Oklahoma now getting uh, ahead of Minnesota and trying to hang on to that. USC, just for argument's sake, looks like they might get past Sacramento State on the outside. And that was the horn indicating that Washington State University has finished in the first position unofficially with UCLA second. Checking it out on the outside screen there, it appears that getting into the third position with a late charge is Oklahoma, Minnesota finishing fourth, and looking at the USC and Sacramento State, very close for that final position, USC trying to salvage something out of this women's collegiate novice grand final. Once again, and unofficially, Washington State the winner, followed by UCLA.